hey cousin welcome back to my channel today i'm going to share with you guys how i created this 360 lace frontal wig before we get into this tutorial please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to like comment and share and you can also find me on social media at innocent hair nine again that is innocent hair nine the first thing that I like to do is thread about 7 to 10 needles. Now the reason that I do this is to save time so I don't have to keep stopping and threading the needle. Now you're going to take your cap and put it on your canvas head. You're going to notice that I align the middle of the cap with the center of the canvas head. Now the reason I do this is to make sure that the cap is sitting on properly. You have to be especially careful in the nape area for the beginners. I had a, you know, a situation where I pulled the cap too far down below the nape area in the back and honey when I put that wig on I had tracks hanging below my neck so just make sure you position it properly make sure you position it to fit your head and please get a canvas head that's the same size as your head I don't know how y'all do it with them styrofoam heads I just cannot it never fits my head because I got a big head but anywho that's my personal preference I'm not saying that you can't use a styrofoam head I just prefer not to so now you're going to just pin your cap down so it doesn't move you know when you start sewing that 360 lace frontal down and when you're sewing the tracks in the center take your 360 lace frontal and you're basically going to slide it on the canvas head. You're going to position it a little bit before the cap in the front. And you're going to position it a little bit below the cap in the back. Now take your time when you're doing this. You don't want to mess up like I did one time where I positioned it too far below the nape area. And when I put the wig on, the 360 area was like hanging on the back of my neck. I couldn't even put it in the ponytail. So just take your time. And you're going to notice that when you pin the front, it's going to be excess lace where you're going to have to fold it. But don't worry about that. What needs to be... um pin down flat is that center lace area so that when you sew those tracks in those tracks can lay flat it won't be no bumps and lumps trust me just take your time i had to record this section about a few times because it was whooping my butt but i got it together so just take your time For better control, I highly recommend that you braid each side of the frontal down from the front to the back. This would ensure that, you know, the thread doesn't get caught up in the hair, you won't run across any knots, you won't have to keep trying to untangle knots. So yeah, that'll be best. And you'll also notice that my braids are not that tight or neat. I'm just doing this to, you know, keep the hair out of the way. Okay, now once I get the hair out of the way, the next thing that I like to do is sew the lace down to the cap. You're going to notice that I sewed closer to the hair and I sewed the other end of the lace. Now, you don't have to do it like that. The only reason why I did that is because I was being lazy. I didn't feel like cutting that excess lace off. You can cut the excess lace off if you want or you can just sew them tracks on top of it. So, while I'm sewing, I just want to let y'all know that God is good. Man, I did a 360 in my life like a whole 360 God is too good you're gonna notice in the right window that I'm doing that inner part of the lace and then in the left window I'm doing the part that's closer to the hairline so once again you don't have to do it like that you can cut that excess lace if you want Alrighty, now we're ready to sew our first bundle. So you're just going to take your bundle out of the pack, however it comes in a plastic, you know, a net like mine. So I like to pin the track to the head so I can have better control. So you're going to take your needle and you're going to stick it through the weft. This is the only time that I stick the needle through the weft. Well, in the beginning of the track and at the end. 
Now the reason I do not stick the needle through the weft throughout the whole sewing of the track is because that causes a lot of shedding. And don't nobody want their hair to be shed and you don't spend all that money on that hair and you be in the bathroom and it's all on the floor. Ladies, if you go get your hair done or somebody's making you a wig, please let them know do not cut your bundles or do not stick the, you know, the thread through the weft all over because that definitely makes the hair shed. Being that I'm only going to sew about two bundles in the center of here, I did not double the weft. So you're going to notice at the beginning of the track, I did, you know, do the little knot method. I only do that in the beginning and at the end of the track. I just feel like all those knots throughout is unnecessary. You'll notice that, you know, once I do that first knot, I just keep sliding my needle across. In certain areas, you know, I might slide the needle through twice. But that's just to do a little extra security. I don't like all those extra knots. I learned that from a school teacher. She actually taught me that about, you know, when I'm doing my client sew-ins. It's kind of like, why do all those knots? It's not a guarantee that the client is going to come back to you. But when they have all those knots, they're going to need some scissors. And most of the time, they're doing it themselves. They can't see. Then they cut their hair. Then they blame it on you. Who got time for all that? Not us. So, remember that when you're doing your sew-ins, too. But I know this is a wig, but I do the same thing. Now in the window to the right, you're going to notice that this is where I'm going to start, you know, getting my track ready to do the flip over method. We're going to sew in like a half C shape and you're just going to follow the circle, you know, along the head. Alrighty, this is where you can notice that the head shape is changing, the half of the circle is getting smaller. But you would just continue to follow it, you'll notice the change and you'll basically know when to, you know, start laying that track from left to right. Now for the last track, we're basically going to sew it from left to right. You'll notice that we're no longer sewing in that C shape. Now I know I did use the fold over method throughout the whole video, but this last piece, I did cut it so that, you know, the hair can lay flat, especially when you're putting it in a ponytail or when you part it down the middle. So you, oh, and don't forget, make sure you sew this track as close as to the hair as possible because you want it to basically look like it's flowing in. You don't want your track to show or anything. Once I've constructed the wig, the next step that I like to do is bleach the knot. 
I know everybody else bleaches their knots before they construct the wig, but I like to do it after because I have better control. All I have to do is flip the wig inside out, then use a butter knife to spread the lightener. Now the reason that I didn't record, you know, me mixing the lightener up together is because I figured there's a whole bunch of videos on YouTube of how to do it. But if you would like to know, you know, what ratio I use to get this consistency, just leave it in the comments box below and then I'll make a video for you guys. Now you do see that I'm using a butter knife to spread it out lightly do not be heavy-handed with this do it real light spread it like butter not cream cheese don't be putting all that pressure on it relax take your time now once I'm done I normally just take a piece of paper foil and put it on top of it I'm also gonna flip it and do the other side of the um 360 lace frontal you'll notice that but yeah I put a piece of paper foil on it and then I let it sit for about 20 minutes also don't forget to set a timer because you don't want to over process it please set your timer Okay, now once your 20 minutes is up, you're going to take the lace and rinse the lightener off of it. Now you'll notice that I'm holding the lace at an angle so that the water doesn't push the lightener through the lace, but actually off of the lace and into the sink. Now once I'm done rinsing all the lightener off, I'll take some neutralizing shampoo and wash the lace to make sure there's no more lightener residue in there. And I'm also going to take some Shimmer Lights Purple shampoo to go ahead and even out any, any brassy tones. And also, I did forgot to record this part, but I did shampoo the hair with some good conditioner. And, you know, I let it sit, rinsed it out real good. And that's it. So, you guys, thank you for taking the time out to watch me make this wig. I'm going to upload another video where I did a get ready where I wore this wig. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you so much. You guys have a wonderful year. God bless.